When it comes to airbrushing, what you are doing mostly dictates the airbrush you are going to use. Which brings us to a conundrum. What if you don't like painting bodies or don't have enough time? Obviously one of the biggest fears is buying a bunch of expensive equipment, not utilizing it, and then having to sell it for dimes on the dollar. Unfortunately there is not really a good black and white answer to this problem. The good news is that airbrushes last a long time. This means if you divide the cost by the number of years you have the equipment, the cost of ownership per year can be insignificant when compared to things like race entry fees and tires. If possible, if you know someone that paints bodies, maybe ask if you can take some lessons or hang out with them. If you can see firsthand someone else painting bodies, it might help you decide if painting bodies is for you or not. You can also see what equipment they are using to help possibly influence you to not go cheap and avoid having to rebuy everything after you paint half a dozen bodies. There are some decent airbrushes out there. If you're going to buy a cheap airbrush, do not buy an airbrush cheaper than a master airbrush from TCP Global. These are probably some of the highest value airbrushes out there. TCP Global is decent and spare parts availability is decent. I painted four bodies with a Harbor Freight airbrush. It was surprisingly not bad. However, after I got done with the fourth body, I was ready for a new airbrush. The unfortunate thing is if, you, if your cheap airbrush survives through the first few bodies, you're going to be wishing that you had bought a nicer airbrush and just put the money of the cheap airbrush towards a decent airbrush. What are the differences between a good airbrush and a cheap one? Generally an expensive airbrush will work perfectly right out of the box. A cheap airbrush you often have to dick around with, with wax and other methods to get them to seal up. Another thing is the smoothness of the internal transitions. You can see that this cheap airbrush does not have a nice smooth transition from the paint cup to the needle like these two expensive airbrushes do. Cheaper airbrushes you seem to fight with more to get them to flow nicely than expensive airbrushes. Cheaper airbrushes also seem to be a little more prone to clogging up. Sometimes it seems that you really have to chase air leaks with cheaper airbrushes. Name brand airbrushes often have Teflon seals which will last many, many years. The seals in cheap airbrushes just don't seem to last as long as the name brand airbrushes. The ergonomics action and the paint air control is usually much better on a name brand airbrush. Depending on the paint you are using and the size of bodies you are painting will dictate what airbrush you buy. If you are painting small bodies with solvent based paint, a Badger 150 will do everything you will need. If you are painting larger bodies with water based paint, a Badger 150 will be lacking. If you are doing just small bodies with solvent based paint, a Harbor Prey airbrush might suit you just fine. If you are going to go cheap, the best cheap airbrush hands down is the Master Airbrush G33 set. You get three needles and three paint cups. The 0.5mm and 0.8mm needles and tips are what you are going to want for dependable painting of thicker water based paints. It also comes with three cup sizes. You can use one cup for doing detail work and effects and a large cup for laying down base colors and backing coats. I have done a lot of painting with these. I have owned three and one of them I had to really fight with to get it to seal up. The Badger 150 is an excellent all around airbrush. It really shines with solvent based paints. It will shoot the heavier water based paints but you may have to fight with it a little bit. I have had issues with the paint build up on the needle guard when using water based paints. Generally speaking, it just seems any siphon feed airbrush really struggles with water based paints. If you are painting RC bodies, static models, and maybe some train stuff with solvent based paint, a Badger 150 will definitely do it all and it will last a lifetime. I have painted touring car bodies with a Badger 150 and I used a large tip and it covered them just fine, but I was using solvent based paints. I personally paint with three different tools. The first of which is the Badger 105 Patriot for detail work and effects. This airbrush has great balance and feel in your hands. It costs around $100 give or take, but will easily last you 20 years. It's perfect for doing detail work with solvent based paints. Its small paint cup makes it a little lacking for doing base colors and backing coats. The second airbrush I use is a Posh Talon TG0620 with a 0.7mm needle and tip. 
This airbrush has a much larger paint cup than the Badger Patriot, and with the 0.7 millimeter needle and tip, it is perfect for painting base colors with water-based paints. Pache also offers a fan cup. I have not had a chance to buy this yet, but I can't wait to try it when painting base colors with water-based paints. The feel and action and balance of this airbrush is excellent. The third and final tool I use is a Hayudo automotive touch-up gun with a 1.2 millimeter tip. It costs around $80. It's a lower end gun, but it's far better than the other ones that I have tried. I would not buy an automotive touch-up gun cheaper than this one. This is the cheapest one you should buy. Eventually I intend to replace it with a DeVilbis or possibly a 3M AccuSpray. I use this gun for painting backing coats, metal flake, and sometimes base colors when I have three truggy bodies to paint. Be careful using one of these guns, they put out a lot of paint really fast. If you primarily do one tenth scale two wheel drive electric buggy bodies, I would skip one of these guns unless you are going to be doing metal flake. This gun also really excels at painting Createx opaque white. If you want to dependably shoot metal flake, a 1.2 millimeter tip is the smallest tip you can get away with. A 1.2 millimeter tip will shoot 4 mil metal flake. One thing I recommend for all airbrushes are quick disconnects. Now, they all leak but only having to switch air hoses from brush to brush and not having a tangled mess of several air hoses is well worth it. The quick disconnect also acts as a rotating union. This helps keep the twists out of the air hose. Otherwise it seems that you have to stop painting every so often and untwist the air hose. I hope you find this video useful. Hopefully you can figure out what airbrush you want to start out with. For the beginner that isn't sure they want to take the plunge, the Master Airbrush G33 set is probably your best bet. If spending a little more money does not scare you, a Badger 105 Patriot and a Posh Talon with the 0.7mm needle and tip will treat you very well. If you have any other further questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll answer them and answer your questions. And if you find this video fairly useful, then maybe like and subscribe it and leave comments, I don't know, insult me or criticize it. I don't, I don't care. Um, anyways,